Hi guys, going to give you a minute or two just to come on here. Tell me where you're from, where are you joining us from? Just going to come on for a few minutes here, but I'm going to give you just two minutes just to jump in here. Good to see you all. I disappear for three or four weeks and then suddenly I'm back with the overload. But uh, it's really good to see you from California, one of my favourite places, Colorado, beautiful, Spain, another one of my favourite places, South Africa, would love to go there, France, bonjour, shalom, Montreal, Canada, Birmingham, UK, San Jose, California, Arkansas, Vancouver, Canada, Virginia, USA, California, Colombia, South Africa, how are you all doing on this Saturday? Whatever time zone you're in, it is a uh, 16.41, 4.41 in the afternoon here. And uh, there's just been a few things that I've had on my heart this week. And I had a conversation with a friend today um, and I sort of affirmed or confirmed some things that God has been speaking to me about. Hi, Nashville, Germany. Hey, you guys in California. Rise up, America. Hope you guys are good. Kansas, Indiana. Kenya, Australia. It must be in the middle of the night in Australia. I am right now. Guys, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, thank you so much for jumping on. I don't want to take a whole load of your time. Uh, Becky and Elijah are out uh, getting a few things. And so I thought I would jump on here real quickly and uh, just share something. And uh, I guess a friend and I were talking earlier and we were, we were chatting about how there's a lot of movement about to happen. And I know we've been saying that for a while. Everybody has been talking about movement and shifting and realignment and relocation and all of that stuff. And yet, as much of as we have been sensing it and as much as we have been hearing about it, some of us are actually still in the exact same place as we were two, three, four years ago that the movement actually hasn't happened it's almost like all of this movement has happened inside of us but in the situation around us on our circumstances on our surroundings it's almost like a god pressed pause and so inside there's a shift there's a change there's a transition but on our surroundings it can look like everything kind of looks the same. We, yeah, our character has been developed exactly. God has been working on what's inside us, which is always more important to him. We know that, don't we? Um, sorry, I can hear my dog barking. Hopefully it'll not go crazy. Uh, I can hear Henry going mad down there. Um, yes, God has been doing this deep work inside us. And that's what I talked about in my last post. Um, almost like a spiritual rehabilitation. Um, but here's what I think now. I, I and my, my my friend was saying he sensed the same that that actually we're going from pause to play. That actually God has taken us off pause, and that we're going to start seeing the movement that we've been anticipating, expecting, preparing for. Because you can't prepare forever. When you're preparing, you're preparing for something. <laughs> Life is not only about preparation. Preparation has got to go somewhere. Can you hear Henry Jacqueline in the background? Um, yeah, preparation is for something. So God is not indefinitely preparing us to stay where we are. There's preparation for something. Does that make sense? And I think and I sense that we're in this place now where God has taken us off pause. That we have been through this cleansing, this purifying, this wilderness, uh, all of that. The pruning. And as much as we, in as much as we have cooperated with God in that, and let's be honest, none of us do that perfectly. But in as much as we have cooperated with God, I think we're going to start to see some things shift. 
And I think we're going to start seeing prophetic words come in that are going to be very clear. I don't know about you, but it feels like for the last two, three years that <laughs> that I've had so few prophetic words. I've had so few people come up to me and say, this is what I sense the Lord saying to you. Um, with directional, with, with with something kind of clear. And I sense that that's going to change now and that you're going to start hearing from the Lord yourself, which is always the best thing. But it's always, uh, it's going to be confirmed by other people. And God has been speaking to me from a passage. I've, I've shared some of this in a post before, but First uh, Samuel 16, where God tells Samuel to go to Jesse in Bethlehem and anoint one of his sons as king over Israel, or the next king. And uh, Samuel goes to Bethlehem, we know that. And we know the story. He brings out the tallest son, El Eliab, and surely this must be, no, it's not him. The next one, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. And all seven of the sons pass by, and every one of them, the Lord says, that's not it. 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 And after number seven, Samuel is really, really confused. Because as far as he's concerned, he has seen all of the sons and God has said no to every one of them. And here's what the word that the Lord keeps speaking to me is. You're not out of options. And some of you need to hear this right now. You're not out of options. Because when you've been on pause for a long time and nothing seems to be happening and nothing seems to be opening up and nothing seems to be changing and nothing seems to be shifting and you're doing everything you know how to do and you're doing everything that you believe God wants you to do and nothing is happening and it's no, 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 no. You can start to believe that you're out of options. And the thing was this. Samuel thought he was out of options. He just didn't realise that there was another option that God hadn't shown him yet. He just didn't realise that there was another son out in the field. There was another option that God hadn't shown him yet. And you know... God's funny. God, I think, has a sense of humour. I mean, he could have told Samuel up front, go to Bethlehem, find David and anoint him as the next king. But he said, go and anoint one of the sons. He gave, and this is, this is important actually for some of us, he gave Samuel enough information to get him to the next place. And once he got there, the next part was revealed. And my friend and I were talking about this today. It's almost like God will give you enough revelation, enough information to get you to the next spot, the next place, the next... And as you act in faith, as you act in courage, as you step out in boldness, to get to the place where he has spoken, where he has shown you, once you get there, you get the next part. But you don't get the next part until you get there. And I actually feel, just as in this story, nobody expected it to be David. I actually feel like once you get to that part, the phrase I used with my friend was, there's a sharp turn. There's an unexpected twist to the story almost. And I feel that for a lot of us at the minute, that as we step out in faith, God is going to surprise us with some of the things he's going to do in our lives. That God is wanting to see, will you move with the revelation you have? Will you move with what he has shown you, with what he has told you? And as you go in obedience, as you step out in faith, as you courageously leave some things behind, even some people behind, and step into the next st stage that he has shown you, even though it's indistinct, even though it's not fully clear, as you will do that, he will show you plot twist. I see that. Exactly. That's exactly what I, I'm sensing. A plot twist, a, a sharp turn, a, something from left field in a good way that you're not expecting. 
that as you go with what he has shown you, go with what he has shown you, he will show you the next part. But I think for many people it will be a sharp turn. It's a bit annoying, I guess it is. I think for Samuel it was a bit annoying. He's standing there, he's travelled, he, he's, he's had to make up, la uh, make up a story as to why he's in Bethlehem to, so that Saul doesn't hear about it. And he's gone through these seven sons and, not, and God has said, no, the oil won't flow. <laughs> the oil won't flow over any of them. And he said, I mean, and he says to Jesse, Are they, is this them all? Because right now I'm out of options. Is this them all? And almost as a throwaway comment, Jesse says, well, there's the little guy out in the field, but nobody really cares about him. He's not important. He's insignificant. That's why he wasn't brought into the dinner here. That's why he's not invited to the feast. And here's what I love. Listen to this. This is good. This is good. This is good. Where's the verse? Yes, Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. And here's what I felt the Lord say. Wait for David. Wait for David. Wait for the one who's anointed. Wait for the one that I have called. Wait for the open door that I bring before you. Wait for the opportunity that I have for you. Because by the time he had gone through the seven sons, I'm sure the temptation would have been just to spill the oil on one of them. <laughs> just to get the whole thing done with. And yet he says, no, we're going to wait on David. We're not going to sit down until... The boy arrives from the field. And I want to say to some of you, wait for David. Whatever that means for you, wait for God's best. Don't settle for less than God's best. Even though it looks like you're out of options. Even though doors seem to be closing. Even though nothing seems to be happening. Don't settle for one of the other seven sons. Wait for David. Don't settle for less than God's best. Don't settle for less than God's best for you. And for some of you I know that's hard. Particularly in the area of relationships, in the area of jobs, I know that's hard. But can I encourage you, please do not settle for less than God has prepared for you. We will not sit down. In other words, nothing happens until he arrives. Nothing happens until David arrives. And David walks in and immediately, that's it. That's the one. Anoint him. Anoint him. And the oil starts to flow. And nobody saw that coming. You know who least saw it coming? David. David, who was just out in the field with the sheep and his harp, singing songs to the Lord. But he had found favour in the field, in the place of obscurity in the wilderness, in the place where he felt like an outsider. A lot of people think that David was possibly an illegitimate son. You see, there were seven sons and then David. Seven is the number of what? Completion and perfection. Eight is one too many. And some people think that David wasn't wanted, wasn't planned, was possibly even illegitimate. And that's why he was assigned to the field. Get him out of the way. We don't want him around. And I want to speak to some people today who, who feel like they've just been left out. <laughs> I want to speak to some of you who feel like the phrase the Lord said to me last week was those who, who, who are never at the cool kids table. <laughs> those who look at other people, other ministries, other people in church and work and you always feel I'm the outsider. That's how David felt. 
He was literally the outsider, the forgotten one, the one who thought, nobody cares, even my own father doesn't even care about me. And yet God saw him out in the field. Some of you know what that's like. Because even you watch things like this on Instagram, you watch some of them and you think, I could never do that. Guys, don't ever, ever, ever rule yourself out. Because here's what's happening. God is bringing the outsiders in. God is bringing the outsiders in. God is bringing the outsiders in. God is calling the outsiders in from the field. The people who have been prepared in obscurity in the wilderness. The people who feel like they don't fit. The misfits. The people who have been left out of the important groups. The people who haven't fitted in. The people who enjoy being alone but don't want to feel lonely. The introverts. The people who feel a bit awkward. God is bringing the outsiders in. He's calling the outsiders in. The overlooked, the underappreciated, underappreciated, the undervalued. He's bringing them in. And he's anointing them. And he's appointing them. And he's placing them in places and positions that they would never have imagined, anticipated or expected. And I really do. I want to speak to those people who for uh, who for this last season particularly has been a lonely season. It feels like nobody's calling, nobody's texting, nobody's really interested in what you're doing. Those people who feel overlooked, undervalued, underappreciated, rejected. They're the ones that God's calling in from the field. And your place of isolation, and I've said this before, it has felt like isolation, but it has been incubation. God has been birthing something. God has been preparing something. God has been gestating something inside you. And it's hard. It's hard at times. And yet there's not much you can do apart from just wait for God to call you. And I want you to be attentive. And I want you to to be expectant for something to start to shift in these coming days. I'm just reading your comments here. Yeah. It has been quite the journey. But again, the journey goes somewhere. The preparation is for something. Guys, you're not out of options. Samuel thought he was out of options, but there were options that he just hadn't seen yet. And God has options for you that you haven't seen yet. Sometimes when, when you've been waiting for so long for a shift to change, you actually just start to think it's not going to happen. I want to say to you, God has options that you haven't seen yet. Wait for David. God is bringing the outsiders in from the field. Go with what he shows you. You might not get the whole picture up front. In fact, it's very unlikely that you will get the whole picture up front. But go with what he shows you. I just want to see if there's anything else that I've written here. The outsiders are good for David. Yeah, I just love this actually. Verse 12. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. This is the one. Number eight, the outsider, was number one in God's eyes. 
This is the one. Wait for the one. Some of you need to hear that today. Wait for the one. Wait for the one. Wait for the one. Guys, I want to go off here, but just is there anything? I just I'm reading your comments. That's the great thing about these lives is I can interact with you instead of just posting things. Rise and anoint him. This is the one. Rise and anoint him. This is the one. May the Lord show you the next step. May the Lord open your eyes. May he give you wisdom. May he give you revelation. I speak favor over you in the field. I break rejection off of you. You're not an outsider. You're not a misfit in God's eyes. You're the one. <laughs> You're the one he's been working on. You're the one he's been preparing. You're the one he has been looking at and go, they're the one after my own heart. For those of you who have been struggling with loneliness and isolation, I pray that God would bring around you, and I think he's going to do this, your tribe, the people who get you. And there's not going to be a ton of them, but he's going to bring around you people who just get you. People that you can relax with, be yourself with, people that you can open your heart to. I really do believe that. And I'm believing that for me because at times, you know, I, I'm naturally an introvert, but at times I've gone from introversion to isolation recently. And and I've really sensed the Lord say to me that, that he's actually bringing a new tribe around me. He's bringing a new group of alignments around me and people that I just naturally and easily connect with without effort. And I believe in that for you. Just reading your comments, guys. You can stay on, you can jump off. I just want to read your comments for a little second. And I just bless you guys in the name of the Father. I bless you in the name of the Son. And I bless you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, as always, for following me. Oh yes, this is hopefully coming soon. This has been such a lot. I finished it in November and it just has been so difficult to edit, but I'm getting there. Uh, hopefully in the next week, wouldn't it be great if I could get it released on St. Patrick's Day next week? Um, that's what I'm aiming for, I'm not sure. But uh, bless you guys. And uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, have a wonderful day. Speak to you soon. Bye.